Thank you. Thank you for being here this late in the afternoon. Um, I have two Gen Z daughters myself, aged 16 and 18, almost 19. And they would, of course, often refer to me as a boomer. They say, OK, boomer, although I'm Gen X. But they say, OK, boomer. So this is kind of my revenge uh, to them. Um, but you can also see the um, title of the presentation is Are You OK, Zoomers? Zoomers, Generation Z. Uh, because to be honest, I've been a bit worrying, a bit worried about them uh, lately because of the pandemic. And they missed out on so important milestones in life like uh, prom, uh, graduation parties, internships, partying uh, at large. Um, and what, what do researchers do when they're worried about their daughters? They do research, like they, they don't talk to their daughters, they do global research. So that is what I did last year, global research in 24 countries, including the US, of course. We couldn't avoid the US, rather uh, big. And one of the themes was specifically on how are they feeling? Are they feeling broken? And of course, mental health, it is a real issue with this generation. 55% uh, um, is feeling stressed too, highly stressed today in the US of Generation Z. And this morning, if you were here, we talked about the feeling of loneliness. That's also the case. We also found, it, uh, found that in our data. Uh, but they're also the most, not the most lonely generation, but also the most stressed out generation. And increasingly, you can see manifestations of that. I'm sure you remember Simone Biles. Who remembers Simone Biles? You do? What happened to Simone Biles? Yeah, she withdrew from the final, uh, the team's final at the last Summer Olympics in Tokyo. And Simone Biles is not just an ordinary athlete, four-time gold medalist. And to me as a Gen Xer, I was, I was watching this, I was like, no, come on, that's impossible. And you can withdraw from a final uh, when you have a physical injury, but a mental injury, that was new to me as a Gen Xer. I was watching that and I couldn't really comprehend it. But then this is really how this generation feels. Uh, and again, when you have the 55% of Gen Z in the US stating that they feel stressed too highly stressed, when we ask them, what are your stressors? What is the reason why you feel stressed? We see 60% of them, so one third of the total Gen Z population in the US, stating they have mental health issues. One third of the total US Gen Z uh, population. The top uh, answer, and you can also see again, the black uh, bar is of course Gen Z, that it's significantly more than other generations. Um, another thing is, like Simone Biles, also my job or my studies is one of the main stressors. It's internal expectations. I want to do as good as my parents. I want to reach the same standard of living that I found with my parents. And it's really putting up this stress uh, for them. And another one, of course, is continuously comparing myself to others. Uh, and there, social media come to play. Social media, of course, um, tap into that. And to illustrate this, I have uh, a short uh, example of uh, euphoria. Who watches Euphoria? Who watched Euphoria? Many of you did. This is one of my favorite series, by the way, on HBO. Um, episode two of season two, a small fragment of that. Kat was depressed because she couldn't figure out why she didn't love Ethan. So she decided to make a list of pros and cons. Kat hated herself. But the problem with hating yourself is you can't really talk about it. Because at some point recently, the whole world joined a self-help cult and won't shut the fuck up about it. Cat, you're one of the bravest, most beautiful human beings I have ever seen. That's not true. Yes, it is. I wish I had your confidence. But I don't, like, feel healthy. Yes, you are. No, like, seriously, I'm not. Kat, you just have to love yourself. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. I fucking hate myself. Every day you get out of bed, it's an act of courage. That's easy for you to say. You don't have, like, fucking mental problems. Yes, I do. Why do you think I look like this? 
Are you kidding? I wish my mental problems made me look like you. Trust me, you don't. Trust me, I do. You're like the most beautiful person I've ever fucking seen. Maybe by a white, cis, male, heteronormative standard? Oh my god, are you fucking joking? You just said the fuck Cat, out. are you fucking serious? It's not you fucking talking. It's the patriarchy. It is you talking. You are not listening. No, society puts things into your mind. I don't care about society. I feel like shit. Cat, you need to smash all beauty standards. But I can't even get out of bed. You have to love yourself. You need to find your inner fucking warrior. Become a bad bitch. Just like you did last year. But that wasn't even real. It looked real. That was the point. I found it inspiring. Shut the fuck up! Love yourself! 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 Quite a strong fragment, uh, and it's not only an illustration of how a cat, the main character in this episode, is um, comparing herself to her friends who look more beautiful um, than she uh, looks at herself, but also it's a good illustration of toxic positivity. And while it's good to be positive and optimistic and happy all the time, when you give the wrong dose of optimism to the wrong person at the wrong time, it becomes toxic and it creates extra stress. Now, luckily, celebrities, influencers like this one, Bella, Bella Adit, 50 million followers on socials, is uh, opening up, becoming more transparent, more authentic. We already had the discussion about the word of authenticity, and started to weep during an Instagram live, uh, explaining about her anxiety and depressions. And it's not only uh, celebrities, but also day-to-day -day content creators like myself and my oldest daughter here, creating not perfect selfies, you could say, with a 0.5 zoom function on your mobile phone. So getting away from filters and perfection by using this type of um, footage we are sharing with our friends. And Be Real is, of course, another example of how social media are evolving towards more authenticity and more in the moment, real moments that you're sharing with friends. By the way, Be Real is the only social medium on which my two daughters accepted me as a friend. So <laughs> either it means it's not important to them as a medium, or it means it's only for the real people, the real friends that they really love. I tend to prefer the second explanation, uh, but I'm not sure, to be, to be, uh, to be honest. Um, but in general, this generation is suffering from a confidence crisis as well. One out of two uh, Gen Zers in the US says, I'm often lacking confidence. Uh, so it, it also creates new opportunities for brands in, in the beverage industry, for instance. Instead of buying an energy drink, you could buy a confidence drink, which is actually already existing. This is a Gen Z startup in Beverly Hills using confidence as a brand name, and it's full of GABA, HTP5, B vitamins, magnesium, all this type of ingredients that gives you a boost of confidence rather than a boost of energy like taurine or caffeine or sugar uh, in the end. So lack of confidence and uh, Unilever's brand uh, Dove has done this update of their campaign for real beauty. Yeah, Dove has already been communicating about um, real, realness, authenticity for 15 years, but recently they're attacking beauty influencers, attacking beauty influencers, but also um, here in their research they saw that 8 out of 10 girls by the age of 13 have already used apps like Facetune, so face editing apps in which they're creating someone else, eh? like the girl to the right is the same girl as the girl to the left, but after she's used some filters and uh, face tuning apps and makeup, uh, of course. And Dove is saying this is not good because not only removing freckles uh, on your face, but also removing your confidence. So this campaign uh, trying to fight this uh, type of insecurities. Now, six out of ten Gen Zers in the U.S. states that they are willing to pay more for brands that are supporting their life goals. Whether it's making it in life or looking good, it's important to them. So this first theme is all about um, being a life coach rather than preaching to the generation, coaching uh, the generation. This morning, um, someone said, 
uh, when talking about brands that do well with this generation, that the beauty industry is doing very good, and I'm, I, fu I fully agree with that. Um, one of the brands that's really resonating with Gen Z is CeraVe. Um, and to be honest, I hadn't expected it, because if you look at the product itself, it looks so boring. <laughs> it's like a boring product. It's one of our clients, but I can say it's a L'Oreal. Um, it looks so standard, so boring. It's not glamorous at all as a beauty product, which is one of the key selling points. Uh, it's, uh, it's delivering what they're promising. So it's moisturizing, and it's developed together with dermatologists. And it's affordable, so perfect for Generation Z. They understand it, it's clear, it's a pragmatic generation, Generation Z, and it's affordable. And also, it's not boring because the product may look boring, but they work together with dermatologist influencers on their own channels, on YouTube, on TikTok, uh, using their first name, not doctor or whatever, but using their first name, and you, they're very approachable. You can ask them questions that you have when it concerns your skincare, and they will answer it in their videos on the same channels that this generation is using. So quite clever of CeraVe, but also involved with influencer marketing, of course. Um, so CeraVe is one of the brands that also resonates with male Gen Z uh, because of this type of influencer videos. Oh, this one right here. Thanks. Hello? I'm here for the free facial. Yeah, come on in. Okay. Hey, thanks for doing this on the house. All right, scalpel, toaster, bread. What's going on? Just relax, sit still. Uh, are you done? Shh. Trust the process. Wait, is that Sarah V? Yeah, it's the magic touch. Skadoosh. Sarah V, developed with dermatologists. This should do the trick. You're all set. All right, let me get that for you. You look good. You look amazing. What's in this stuff? Can't say. It's a secret formula. Oh, it's just water, three single ceramide. It's a secret. Fantastic. Uh, real user generated content. 18,000 comments shared 50,000 times, 5 million views, and it works. And it's fantastic that a brand like L'Oreal accepts that this is done with their brand. I mean, if you look at the content, many beauty brands would say, oh, no way, not with my brand, but they're doing it. And it's good because that's what this generation likes, to de-stress, to escape from all the stress. They want playful brands. They are actually ready to roar. In the last panel, we had the music panel that some of you might have missed. We talked about sped up remixes, and it, it is clear uh, a trend with this generation. Because if you look at the average beats per minute of songs today in the US billboards, you would see that it went up in the last years after the pandemic because they all want to dance, they want to party, they want to have fun again. So they're ready to roar. And of course, Beyonce's house uh, album, Renaissance, but also Drake's uh, a hit during the summer was all more sped up, which is actually what this generation really wants. They're also willing to pay more for brands that offer them playfulness and you breaking the law, 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 breaking the law. Famous Super Bowl ad, and one of the brands uh, developed by this guy, Mike Cesaria, who uh, is coming from the creative industry, used to work in agencies and a creative director with Netflix, who found the niche into the mineral water business that's always talking about health and mountains and natural water. And he says, no, I want the opposite. I want a fun water brand using semiotics of energy drinks, alcohol brands, and it works.
It works to be a premium water brand because he found that this generation also is looking for fun, even in water brands. So Liquid Debt, uh, in the last valuation, $700 million as a startup. Not bad as a niche uh, to, to find this as a marketer. Creativity is a currency for this generation. It's also the reason, if you look at uh, Be Real or TikTok or Snapchat, it's all about being creative, of course. And also in virtual worlds, they're creating avatars as well. So that creates opportunities as well. Pfizer, for instance, um, during the COVID uh, um, uh, pandemic, they uh, worked together with GTA in Brazil, uh, GTA, Grand Theft Auto, famous game, uh, because they understood to actually reach Generation Z, we have to be present in the virtual world. And so they developed this um, avatar mission, the vaccination mission, in which you got your avatar vaccinated, and then you received the badge. And that sounds like a very boring mission to me in GTA. But the clever thing about it, if your avatar was vaccinated, you also received more immunity in the other missions of the game. So they were actually communicating if you get vaccinated yourself, not only your avatar, but also yourself, you will live longer. And they pre-tested and post-tested in Brazil, and they saw an uptake of the amount of young people that wanted to get vaccinated um, for the uh, pandemic. So of course, being present in online worlds is important. Also. To stay cool, um, you have to reinvent yourself all the time. Um, and so we talk a lot about drops, but drips are the new drops. And what's the difference between a drip and a drop? A drop is uh, often bought by bots online, then uh, res resold on eBay or whatever to gain a profit. A drip actually engages your real fans, your loyal fans. So a good example was also mentioned already today is, is Telfar as a brand really engaging uh, with their fans, asking something in return. Coca-Cola, one of our clients, is trying to make the brand more cool by um, creating limited edition Coca-Colas. Uh, they have Coca-Cola creations. I'm not sure if you tasted the Starlight. It's supposed to be space flavored. I've tried it and it tastes like vanilla. <laughs> but maybe space tastes like vanilla. Who knows? Um, but the, the thing is, the drip thing about this is on the can you have a QR code and with the QR code you can um, actually access uh, an online gig of Eva Max. Then they released the pixel flavored um, Coca-Cola Bite and there the QR code gives access to a separate island on Fortnite. So a separate game on Fortnite that you can only play if you have the QR code on the uh, Coca-Cola can. So this second part was all about playfulness, creativity, and giving a platform for escapism um, for this young generation. Third theme is about wokeness. We cannot talk about the young uh, generation without talking about their activism. And I'm sure you remember this picture of Donald Trump in uh, Oklahoma, Tulsa, where he was speeching for 6,000 people in a stadium that could easily fit in 25,000 people. And who remembers what the reason was? Yes? What was the reason? Yeah. Young people actually registered for the event and didn't show up. It was initiated by BTS, the BTS army, so the fans of BTS, with this video. Oh no, I signed up for a Trump rally and I can't go. <laughs> I'm sick. What? Oh no, I signed up for a Trump rally and I can't go. This is huge, huge chess <laughs> or something. Huge chess, I think you should pronounce it. That didn't uh, show up uh, during the, the rally. So it had an enormous effect. And you could say, yeah, is that activism? It's quite lazy. It's from behind your laptop and you're boycotting something. But this is exactly understanding the power of social media and online media, which is what this generation is doing all the time. 15% of Gen Z in the US says they are, have participated in a protest, mostly online, in the past uh, six months. And they're not only activists themselves, they also, they also want brands to be uh, activists, of course. Um, often we think it's all about sustainability, but if we look um, in our study, 
what would be the global issues that they would tackle first if they were the president, and they can only choose three, then you see global warming and climate change, it's in the top 10, but it's not on number one and not in the top five. Um, so when we look into details, it's more into the social issues. So ESG, environmental, social, governance. Um, the S is more important to Gen Z than the E, whereas the E is more important to millennials. Women small business owners face unique challenges. But when they succeed, they're more likely to hire other women and reinvest in their communities. Their grit, resilience, and heart is their secret sauce. With tools, resources, and mentorship, MasterCard supports these small business owners. See how you can too. It's an example of how MasterCard taps into both female-owned and black-owned uh, businesses, both important to this generation. And it's not the only thing, not the only social issue they want to challenge. It's also, of course, about gender fluidity. Half of Generation Z in the US says that gender identity is something that can change over time. And they don't want to be put in a box when it comes to gender, which is also what Harry Styles, one of the most um, favorite artist of Gen Z is saying in all interviews. He doesn't want to talk about his gender preferences. Um, and uh, he also created this very expensive makeup line. I had to buy it for my daughters for Christmas. <laughs> it's crazy how expensive it is. Uh, it is. It looks great. And it's not intended only for girls. It's also for everyone who wants to be colorful, like myself, and wants to express um, his or her or them own uh, identity. And then one uh, thing, again, coming back to virtual environments, is how avatars create more equality. We asked um, different generations, do you feel more equal in a virtual environment, like in games? And both millennials and Gen Z say, yes, uh, we do. And that creates new opportunities also for media. So this uh, Fox TV format, Alter Ego, uh, gives more inclusivity also for people who are more introverts, perhaps, uh, and want to perform in a talent show without actually being on stage in front of the jury, but using their uh, avatar, which is uh, great. So this Are You Woke, it's all about impact. And there your brand should show how you have social impact, whether it comes to environmental issues, but more importantly for Gen Z, also social issues. And then we come to the last theme, which is all about the future. How are they thinking about the future? And many of them say, yeah, we feel stressed, but we're still optimistic that we'll make it in life. And one thing they understand is they will have to work hard to achieve the same levels the same uh, standard of living of their parents. So many of them already have a side hustle, which is also typical for this generation. And one example is Jamie, Jamie Ibanez. He, uh, in high school, he used to sell snacks to his fellow friends in high school uh, who were more lazy than him, and he gained $5,000 of savings by doing so. And then at the age of 18, he applied for a job with Mondelez, And he got a sales job with Mondelez, also in the snacking business, which was really his passion. But after working a couple of months for Mondelez, he said, is this what I really want? And pun intended, he felt a bit hungry for entrepreneurship. So he decided to leave Mondelez and start his own business, which is a vending machine business. And today he has 32 vending machines in North Texas, which is bringing him $10,000 a month. And apart from that, he has an additional $10,000 a month from his own YouTube channel on which he explains how you can start your own vending machine business and earn $10,000 a month. So he earns $20,000 a month, half of it coming from his YouTube channel uh, explaining this. He's not the only vending machine influencer, by the way, because if you look for it, you will find others doing exactly uh, the same. So it's really the passion economy, creating, doing something you really love, and also sharing it uh, with your friends. And half of Gen Z in the US would like to start their own business as well. So money, status, prestige to Gen Z, it is important. These are the kids of Gen X, the European generation. So they felt this kind of values and they're copying it a little bit. Sometimes in the wrong way, they're following certain uh, influencers like this one. $500,000 for my Rolls Royce, $750,000 for my Aventador, 
another quarter million for a few other cars each. How do I have this at 22 years old? Let me tell you, it's NFTs. If you're not capitalizing on this multi-billion dollar market, you've got it all wrong. Join my Discord and I'm gonna teach you exactly how to get into this industry. Whether you have little to no money, a medium amount of money, or a high intensive amount of capital to generate massive revenue. Join the Discord. I would call him a freak and I wouldn't like my daughters to follow him for financial advice. Um, so what we did, we asked in the US, um, where are you investing in? And many of them are investing more than older generations. NFTs, you can see 11% of Gen Z uh, in the US, but crypto, 18%, almost one out of five uh, in the US. And these four categories are significantly more invested in by Gen Z than older generations. Uh, you can also see luxury fashion and streetwear. So it's buying Nikes, limited edition Nikes, not to wear them, but to keep them in their box, in the closet and then resell them and make a profit on that uh, as well. So it's the hustle uh, heart um, value again. Same with art. So it's not a, um, a coincidence that luxury brands like Gucci, for instance, are already in the NFT uh, business. And for instance, this, the, the Queen Dionysus bag, handbag, which would cost you $3,400 in a Gucci store, physically, physical Gucci store. They sold it pixels a little bit in, um, on Roblox for $5, five and a half dollars. But during a very limited amount of time, uh, in Gucci Garden on Roblox, a campaign that did. And one girl was able to buy it and then resell it for more than $4,000 largely surpassing the value actually or the price that they would ask for the same handbag physical handbag in the in the physical store so it shows the value of the uh, digital uh, to this generation as well so up till now we've talked about activism wokeness inclusivity inclusiveness of brands we talked about exclusivity as well uh, limited editions um, the drips and the drops and today we've talked a lot about Generation Z, looking at them as if they are just one breed, <laughs> like they're all the same, which is of course not the case. And, and to illustrate that, we did a cluster analysis for the statistics uh, nerds in, uh, in the room. Uh, so a segmentation on the US Gen Z population, and we found four different segments that as you can see, are looking for entirely different things in brands. So if you only use two dimensions, and of course it's a simplification of truth, if you only use a dimension, I'm into influencers and exclusiveness of a brand, I, I like to buy brands that are really on trend, so that's the first dimension, or at the bottom side, the ones who say, I'm not interested in that at all. And the second dimension is, um, I want a brand to be inclusive or I don't care about inclusiveness at all. As, as you can see in the result, 65% of Gen Z in the US is into being on trend and into trendy brands. So it's clear that it's important to be on trend, to offer limited editions, to be exclusive. On the other hand, inclusiveness is also important to 40% of the uh, Gen Z population in the US, the right side of the, of the scheme. But to 60%, they say, yeah, inclusiveness. Who cares? But we've been talking all day about Generation Z and how they think about values and inclusiveness. 60% says, not so important. Sustainability, the same. Only the show-offs that you can see, 40%, they say, I'm only buying brands that are sustainable. And if you go into the details and you ask them, what are you doing to save the planet? They say, me, nothing. It's not, it's not up to me to do something for the planet. Companies should do it. I'm only buying brands that are sustainable. And how do you know that they are sustainable? Well, when they advertise about being sustainable. So it's only about the label sustainable and good for the planet. It's not really about the actions because they're the show-offs. They want brands that are reflecting their identity, their values, which is more on exclusivity, but also on sustainability as a label, not necessarily as really what they are uh, looking for, which is totally different than the stressed out Greta's, stressed out Greta's, Greta Thunberg, 
These girls, they hate brands. They hate multinationals. They refuse to buy big brands. They're buying local and they're doing climate actions themselves. So they're totally different than the uh, show-offs that say, yeah, I'm only buying sustainable. It's just as an example and an illustration of how it's more nuanced when we look into the details of Generation Z. It's not one uh, group, not all cats are gray, uh, of course. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed some of this inspiration. Um, if you download the report, you will find more details. And uh, I'm happy to share the deck as well as the report with you as well if you send me an email. I'm Yuri, by the way. I'm working for Humanate, which is the new name of Insights Consulting, formerly known as Insights Consulting. We rebranded two weeks ago. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.